Unity of Houston is an inclusive church where we seek to understand and live the teachings of Jesus and other spiritual masters. At Unity, we welcome all people from all spiritual paths and every walk of life. We celebrate the diversity of our city and of our world, and we teach love, tolerance, and oneness, seeking to live in harmony with open minds and open hearts. Wherever you are in your spiritual path, you are always welcome at Unity. Join us and discover that the life of your dreams is already within you. So I want to know if you've been curious, like I've been curious, about some things. So perhaps now we're in our fourth message of our prayer series. You've heard a lot of prayer about prayer, and you've heard perhaps about the truth of our being. It's the Christ consciousness. So have you been curious about, well, if the truth of me is Christ consciousness, then is there something more that I'm becoming? Is there more in me that's wanting to be expressed? Do I have untapped potential? And I'm not just talking about, like, you know, getting a, getting a new house or a promotion or something like that. I'm talking about a whole new life, because wouldn't you have a whole new life if you were walking and talking and being and expressing the Christ consciousness. No? Yeah? We're all doing it? <laughs> we're working it, right? We are. No, we really are. So I brought this topic, Prayer Becomes You, because what I learned about prayer, is, so I want to share just, just my perspective on prayer tonight, is that when... I opened up to what possibilities were available to me that I felt could express this untapped potential that I was learning about when I came to Unity. And I came to this awareness of the possibility of being a Unity minister. It was just an idea. It was a vision. It was something way out there. I didn't know how. I didn't know when. I, I didn't know the means. When I got the divine idea to be a mom, at, you know, in my late 30s, and I thought, how, when, is it possible that these things, these expressions of the divine in me came forth from a prayer, and that prayer has now become my life. So hence, prayer becomes you. Do you remember in the 90s there was that movie, Death Becomes Her? Any of you remember that movie with Meryl Streep and... Uh, she takes this potion to become immortal. Well, there are some strings attached to this because in order to be immortal, she had to be dead. And so things would happen, like her head would be on backwards and stuff like that. Anyway, it's funny. <laughs> but death becomes her, meaning that she looked better in death than in life. So we say that that blouse becomes you or that gown becomes you. It's a compliment, meaning that it, you know, it's becoming on you. So we've all prayed today, right? We all experienced prayer together. So turn to your neighbor and say, prayer becomes you. Prayer looks good on you, right? And we're, we're, that's what we're saying. Prayer looks good on you. So there's a double meaning to this, prayer becomes you. Not just that prayer looks good on you, but that as you pray, your life becomes the prayer because it changes the nature of your consciousness. So how do we take something that's just an idea that has been revealed to us and use it to create into our life so that it becomes you? Do you want, do you want to know? Are you in? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So first we need to understand how affirmative prayer works and how unity prayer is different from maybe traditional ways that you've learned how to pray. So in affirmative prayer, we don't ask God to fix things. We don't reach out to an uh, external deity for things to fix our lives. Like in, I think about Greek theater, there's this theatrical device called deus ex machina. You heard of that? And the way that it was used was that if there was a situation and the playwright basically couldn't figure out how to resolve it, God would show up and just fix it. And that was deus ex machina. And the machina part is that they used like a crane, a machine, to bring out this God character to fix, to fix 
right? So we're not talking about God as like a fix-it or Mr. Handyman. Um, one example is in Euripides, Medea. You might be familiar with that, that Medea is saved by this dragon-led chariot that comes and whisks her away from her husband, Jason, so she, he doesn't kill her and takes her to safety in Athens. So that's great for Greek drama. Um, doesn't, doesn't work with affirmative prayer. So remember in Genesis 1, in Scripture, it says that we are created in the image and likeness of God, that God created us in the image and likeness. So... The image is, of course, divine mind. That is how we understand the image, that it is our divine potential that we all have within us so that I was talking about, our Christ nature, and the likeness is how we unfold that. So it's our work to unfold and express the divine nature, and that's the becoming. And we use prayer to affirm, to shift our consciousness, to become the likeness of God and express the Christ. Unity uses affirmative prayer uh, to, as an attitude of the heart. It's not about the doing, but about the being, about the shifting into our heart space. We always talk about that when we go into prayer. We shift into our heart space. And so a way that we can do that, we can use heart math. If you're familiar with heart math, just a real simple, what they call heart coherence, you can just put your hand on your heart and just breathe in, breathe out. You can breathe in to a count of five and exhale to a count of five. And that as you're breathing, you're deepening the breath and relaxing. You can all do that now if you like. Centering on the movement as if the breath is breathing into your heart, your own breath. And then imagine someone that you're really grateful for. And just hold that appreciation for that person, the gratitude, the love. And as we stay with that, our heart shifts into a coherent, energy. This is a practice that I learned when I was working as a prayer associate at Silent Unity, just getting into our heart-centered energy that shift from doing into being, being. And so when we do that, then through our minds, we can become open to an awareness of our oneness, an awareness of God consciousness. Unity author Sue Sicking said, True prayer is not asking for things, not even the best things. Prayer is the lifting of the consciousness to the place where those things are, where those things already are. So we're raising our consciousness to an awareness of health, of abundance, of success, of whatever it is that we're wanting to see and realize into our life. An understanding of God as the realm of all divine ideas, that God is wholeness, God is peace, God is love, understanding, harmony, and strength. So a way that we can understand and practice prayer becoming us is also, this is a, a, getting into some unity metaphysics here, is an understanding of the law of mind action. So law of mind action just explains basically that our consciousness works the same way that God consciousness works, that God ideates and we create. So what that means is that God consciousness is creating mind, idea, expression at the level of spirit, and that when we create into the level of form, we also create by mind, idea, expression. Uh, the expression part in our human experience is at the level of our consciousness. So we're wanting to lift that level of consciousness to a higher awareness to have a greater expression, because we're all expressing health. We're all alive in here. I'm, what I'm noticing. I don't think Meryl Streep is here from Death Becomes Her, but uh, we're all expressing health, we're all expressing peace, life, love, at wherever we are feeling and being today, however awesome and amazing or, you know, just came in from the traffic, whatever it is, that's the level of consciousness that we are in the moment, and that can change. So how does prayer become our lives? Well, 
I think a w another way is to get curious about how prayer has become the lives of others. And the best example that I know of that is our Unity co-founders, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. They, uh, the prayer completely changed their lives. In 1886, Myrtle Fillmore was given a death sentence. She was considered terminally ill. And she and Charles were going around Kansas City and trying to find some answers. They were listening at different spiritual healing teachers and they discovered a metaphysical teacher named Dr. E.B. Weeks who gave a talk and Myrtle Fillmore heard what she needed to hear in order to heal her body that you are a child of God and therefore you do not inherit sickness. And so after that she began practicing affirmative prayer and she spoke life to all the organs of her body, and over a period of a couple of years healed her body. And another thing that she did during this time is that she would read and reread certain scriptures. And this is one of them from John. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to the Father. So imagine reading that again and again, and recognizing that as she's healing, that she's developing the capacity to then be a healer and a healing presence in the world. And she's realizing this. And another verse from John, do you want to be healed? Jesus said, do you want to be healed? So becoming the prayer begins with a willingness and checking in with the reality that you have and the reality that you want to experience and are you willing to give up the reality, the limited experience that you're wanting to change. What are your attachments to it? What do you get out of this experience? Is there something it's creating that it's okay? I can let go of whatever emotional bonds, ties, situations, whatever it is around that, I can willingly release that so I can open in to a greater experience. So she had to release her own identity of being a sick person and whatever ways that her family loved on her and doted on her and helped her, whatever that, that was, that experience, she had to let that go in order to move into health. So then she became a healing presence, a positive force in the world. And this is beautiful. I found this uh, in the uh, Myrtle Fillmore Mother of Unity book that Charles was just amazed with her healing and how she improved from being given a death sentence. And Myrtle said to Charles, I am healed and you are too, for we are one. Isn't that beautiful? I am healed and you are too, for we are one. Let's say that together. I am healed and you are too, for we are one. Say that to the person next to you. When we shift into that consciousness of health, we just become a healing presence in the world and we can't help but have a positive influence on those around us. So Charles did come to know the truth and he was healed. He wasn't given a, a death sentence, but he had other ailments that were healed. And so in 1888, now this is just two years after she got the death sentence, she healed her body, and Charles and Myrtle were ready to launch into what later became Unity School of Christianity. And they started out just meeting clients in their home, praying with them, just basically doing a prayer treatment. They were doing affirmative prayer. They would meet with them, and they would know the truth with them. And so their consciousness was shifted. They didn't give them any kind of um, medicine or anything like that. It was just totally prayer-based. And they saw prayer becoming the people that they were serving. And the people they were serving were being healed. And they were telling other people, and they were being healed. And people were calling in, and I mean, though they were writing in first. Later, they added the phone, and it became silent unity. So they had become the prayer. Unity prayer involves changing your orientation to life. So many of us live a life where we look at our circumstances and think our circumstances are creating our lives, and that is living from 
the outside in. And so unity truth teaching teaches that life is meant to be lived from within out, that we're creating our own experience. So ask yourself if you believe that you've exhausted all of your resources. You feel like, you know, I've done everything that I can, and I just really haven't been able to make my life any better. So have you ever thought that? Maybe you've thought that. Maybe you're not thinking that now. But uh, that if you've ever thought that, that that kind of thought is looking for the wrong source. That's looking for a source outside of yourself. That's living from the outside in. So we just want to be aware of that. Okay, I'm seeing life that way. I can shift from a within to a within-out experience, recognizing that God is my source. God is my unlimited supply. God is just a prayer away, as Tony beautifully sang for us, that our resources are unlimited. When we get that, that's a level of consciousness, and that comes through sitting in the silence, in prayer, and realizing that, and then your thoughts come into alignment with it. So I want to tell you briefly about the four levels of consciousness, because I think that's important in understanding how prayer becomes us. So there are lots of levels of consciousness, but unity breaks it. There, it gives you four basic ones, and there are lots of other ones. If you want to look in the metaphysics book, you can find out all the list of all of them. The four basic levels of consciousness are victim. So victim, of course, is life is happening to me. There's victor, which is life is happening by me. You've got a little, you realize you have some control. There's still some victim there, though, because to have a victor, you have to have a victim. So it's a little victim, but it's a big step up from victim. Then there is vessel, which is God happening through me. So now, instead of life happening to me, well, same, I'm still having something happening, but now it's God rather than outside things. God is happening, and God is happening through me, but there's still some of that separation because... It's not me. It's through me or as me. And then there's verity consciousness. So verity consciousness, the word verity means truth. That's Christ consciousness. That is me. Okay, that's an awareness that God is me. Oneness, truth, Christ consciousness, they're all synonyms for that same level of consciousness. So we live at stages of consciousness, which means that we predominantly express either victim, victor, vessel, or verity, but that we can be at different states. So we know Jesus primarily expressed verity consciousness, truth consciousness. However, on the night before his death, he prayed and he said, take this cup from me, and that was victim consciousness. So we see that even Jesus experienced different states of consciousness with his stage was verity. So that's, that's the work that we're here to do. So how does, now I, I'm getting, we're getting praying for ourselves, right, and becoming the prayer, but how does praying with others teach me how to become the prayer? So I wanted to share with you about um, this story and it's from Eric Butterworth, from a book called The Universe is Calling. And I thought that this was a wonderful way to express the shift in consciousness of divine mind, not as something outside of you that you call upon, but that divine mind is at the point of you and at the point of the person that you're praying with, so there is a divine connection. And that it's not that the person that you're praying with can't pray for themselves. We, we can all pray for themselves. It's that when we pray together, that energy is amplified, and notice that, it's multiplied. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. The I am consciousness becomes even more amplified and available and um, is moving in a higher way. So we're encouraged to pray with each other to really create a shift and that's, that was my, my experience for my own shifts as well, a power in praying with others. This is the story, finally. A man was distraught over his young son, who was into drugs and alcohol, realizing that as long as his thoughts about the son were focused on worry and parental concern, 
he was giving support to the weakness. This father worked diligently to alter his anxious concern. And then he prayed, not to God about his son, but from the consciousness of God, projecting this consciousness to his son, saluting the divinity in him, and seeing him as strong and whole. So the father realized that in order to see a shift in the healing in his son, he had to know peace himself. He had to get his mind and thoughts in alignment with divine consciousness first, before he could really pray to higher consciousness and not out of the worry and fear and concern. So he shifted. He knew wholeness. He knew strength. He knew these divine ideas, which were the truth of his son. And his father became the prayer, the prayer that he is wanting to see his son express. He became that prayer. So that's what we do when we pray for others. We, when I became a prayer chaplain in my training, that was the first time that I ever learned how to pray with other people. And we were taught that we always receive the prayer first. The prayer receives the prayer first because we're shifting our consciousness into that higher level of awareness. And I was really blessed to get to pray one-on-one -on -one with people in my church and to hold their hands and that as I was knowing the truth with them, I could feel the energetic shift in them as they went into their heart as they let go of worry and concern, and we both harmoniously came together in that awareness of truth. It's really powerful. And then I went on, when I was in ministerial school, I worked at Silent Unity, and I was a prayer associate on the lines, which was really wonderful because we, we pray as Silent Unity. You represent Silent Unity, so... Um, <coughs> I, I was praying in that consciousness of oneness, which was really a beautiful thing. And I had to know the truth with everybody who called. And there were so many wonderful and beautiful prayers. And sometimes people would call again and again. And, and I was new in the beginning, and I would get annoyed because <laughs> they would call and some of their prayer requests I thought were ridiculous. I was in judgment, okay? Uh, one person called a lot and would ask Pray that I win the lottery. Pray that I win the lottery. And I'm like, I just prayed with you like two times. I'm like, okay, I'll pray again to win the lottery. And I just had these judgments, okay? I judge. I thought, well, you know, they just think that we're God's slot machine and they're just going to call and it's materialistic. And uh, I wasn't sure about that. And so I really blessed to have a wonderful supervisor that I could go to and talk about these things and get support. And what I learned was that we pray for the highest good. We don't pray for a certain result that they win the lottery. And so what was the highest good of this prayer request? That this person, what does winning the lottery mean? They want to do experience unlimited abundance like they never experienced before. Could I hold that with them? Absolutely. Absolutely. I could get excited about that, and it doesn't sound like... Um, you know, something that's, that's way out in the extreme of possibilities, like, yes, I, and I don't know how that's going to come forth for them. But then I recognize where are my limitations for myself in receiving and knowing unlimited abundance. So praying with that person for that was really a great blessing because I got to shift from judgment into an awareness in my own resistance to abundance and how I could be more open to that so that I can know that for them and I know it for myself at the same time. So in closing, I want to encourage you to pray. Pray for yourself. Become the prayer. Pray with others so that you can experience that amplified energy of prayer. And you can become a Unity Prayer Partner right here next year. I know Reverend Karen's going to have some training if that's interesting to you. And if you'd like to pray with others, our Unity Prayer Partners, are, somebody will be here to pray with you tonight. You can call Silent Unity 24-7. They're available as free confidential prayer. And pray, decide who you want to pray with. 
pray for, make a long prayer list, put everybody on it, because it not only blesses them, it definitely blesses them, it also blesses you in raising your consciousness to that awareness of whatever it is you're holding with them, you get to know it first, and then you become an agent for positive, love-filled, light-filled change in this world. Go forth and be the light. God bless you. Thank you for watching this message today. I'd like to invite you to join us in person here on campus at Unity of Houston for Sunday morning or Wednesday evening services. If you can't be with us here on our campus, you can still join us live on Facebook or on our website, unityhouston.org, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Central.